This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to World's Shocking Stories. I'm Denise, and with me, as always, is my soulmate and partner in this roller coaster we call life, Brad. Hey, everybody. Just so you guys are all wondering, we are doing our Shocking Stories on Monday. Yeah, we're going to change it up because life has gotten really hard lately. So we're going to go back and forth between your episodes and my episodes. Yeah, we're going to go back to one episode per week. Right. With your work and everything, and as people know... My mom has dementia and it's hard and I need to get my stepdad breaks, you know, so he can have his time. So I do, I guess it's mommy sit for a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Also, if you know people with dementia, you know that sometimes they get confused on where they are. So I have emergency visits to her place and trying to calm her. So it's a little overwhelming right now. Yeah. And me with working full time, Mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to... For us to put out two episodes a week plus a Patreon episode. So we are going to take a step back with the new year. Yep. And go back to one episode per week. Yep. And it's especially with like, you know, summer coming up pretty soon. We want to go camping. camping. I mean, put out all those extra episodes a little bit, a lot for us because we do work and we don't do this full time. So we want a little break from it all. I need a break because I am so overwhelmed right now. Yeah, we're still going to put out episodes every Monday now in our Patreon episodes. And we don't want to get to the point where we're starting to not have a well-researched episode out. We want to keep up with the deep dives. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We want to have more research because right now with two episodes a week, our research kind of goes back and forth. Well, you get home from work, a long day of work, and then you get on the computer after you eat something. And it's a lot. It is a lot, yeah, so... It'd be nice to take a little break once in a while and have mm-hmm. some time with my family. Yeah. So we are going to do that. So just let everybody know we're going to one episode per week. If you want more episodes, we're still going to put our Patreon out every 1st and 15th of every month. We are. So there's a few episodes on there if you guys want to catch up. And yeah, it's really cheap. I think it's like a buck fifty Canadian a Something month. like that, yeah. So it's really cheap. So yeah, if you want the extra episodes, go there. Mm-hmm. So with all that being said, we want to give a promo to a fellow podcaster in the Den Network. This is History I'd Like to Fuck. If you like <laughs> history like I do. I love the name. <laughs> yeah, no, I love history. So without further ado, we're going to play the intro for History I'd Like to Fuck. <laughs> Hi, I'm Don Brody, a comedian with a history degree and the host of the podcast Hilf, History I'd Like to Fuck. Each episode, I am joined by a new guest who has brought me a subject from history that they want to know more about. Then I hit the books, I dig deep in the annals, and stimulate. <laughs> We've covered Frankenstein, Houdini, Joan of Arc, Pompeii, the Salem witch trials, right? Oh, join us and find out for yourself that history is a party and everybody's coming. <laughs> Prostate check, anyone? Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I like history. Like, I'm a really big fan of history and criminology. Yeah. Like, to mix both those, it's awesome for me. So, so yeah, join Don. We'll leave all of her stuff in our description. And without further ado, we need to get onto our episode. We do. There was a time when you opened up the morning newspaper, you'd grab a pen and start the daily game. It could have been bridge or even crossword. But what if the game was a deep conspiracy online looking to recruit highly intelligent people with no clue who started the puzzle? Does that sound interesting? It does. I used to play those crosswords. Oh, me too, all the time. I get to play the crossword, but they're always so like really hard. I never 
do very good at it. Not the in town one. Yeah, but you or know, newspaper like the one? New York Times one. Oh god, oh, no! My god, no! I couldn't even get one word. Yeah, those are smart people. Yep. So this is all about Cicada three three zero one. It is the nickname of three puzzles that were sent out to the general public between two thousand twelve and two thousand fourteen. Oh, just three puzzles. Not just three puzzles. <laughs> oh yay! <laughs> so, like Denise said, these were put out there to find intelligent people. And the first puzzle was sent out on January fourth, two thousand twelve, on four chan. You know what 4chan is? I do not. 4chan was a worldwide image board for discussions, kind of like Reddit and Twitter, but here you remain anonymous. Oh, okay. It was like toxic. (laughs) Well, that's the bad thing with anonymous things. It is toxic because people can just say whatever they want to say and nothing's going to come back and And bite them in the ass. people did. Right. It was pretty bad. Yeah. It is believed that solving these puzzles would lead you to the end of the tunnel and meet the people behind it. The puzzle was created for people to have knowledge in coding, cryptography, encryption, stenography, you know, those types of fields, like tough ones. I don't even know what stenography is. Neither do I. This is a lot of big words with oography at the end of it. I know. Oography. Oography. Yeah. So we're going to start that movie time right off the bat because. Oh, shite. The first okay. puzzle came out. It's on, uh, what, January 4th, 2012. Yeah, I guess so. So we're going to hit movie time and do it early. Okay. <laughs> Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime. You ready? I am. I'm just watching the cats run around. Yeah. Okay. This is a tough one. Remember, we're doing the the whole synopsis thing, right? Yeah, I'm going to read it all. Then okay. You get, then you guess. Okay. 20 years after Maria Rossi murdered three people, her daughter, Isabella, seeks the truth about that terrible night. Isabella travels to an Italian hospital for the criminally insane, where Maria is locked away to find out whether her mother is mentally ill or demonically possessed. With the help of two young exorcists, Isabella tries to cure Maria and engages four demons in a battle for her mother's soul. Is it? The Exorcist? No. Okay. I was going to say, like, I'm sure it's been done again. Oh, I don't, I don't know. It's a tough one. It made $101.8 million. It's done by Paramount Pictures, and mm-hmm. it's a horror. I figured it's a horror. You're talking about demonic powers and stuff with that. Oh, I don't know. And honestly, I don't know any actor in it. Oh, really? No, I'm going through the cast right yeah. now. I don't see a familiar name. No, I don't know. I don't know anybody in it. Do you always give it to you? Yeah. It is called The Devil Inside. Never heard of it. Apparently did well. Never heard of it. Neither did I. And I love scary movies. Yeah. I never, I don't know. I don't know much about it. So yeah, that was a tough one. When I did that one, I knew I was going to stop you on that one because I stopped myself (laughs) on it because I didn't know what it was. Yeah. If you're going to stump you, then you know you're going to stump me. Right. Okay, so ready to get back to Cicada? I am. So the message that was written on 4chan was as follows. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it and it will lead you on the road with us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. So did anyone figure it out? So the first puzzle, yes. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. The first puzzle was solved by a man named Marcus Wanner. Wanner? And about 20 other people, according to him. So 21 people, I don't know, like around, say, let's just say 20 to 30. Okay. Okay. The puzzle asked questions about the support of information freedom, online privacy, and freedom and rejection of censorship. So yeah, that's when you solve the puzzle, they kind of give you like... They ask you questions about that type of stuff of where your stance is on that. Okay. I uh, it's about freedom. It's about it's about censorship and should like information be like leaked to the public or should they keep it inside? That's what they're looking at like looking for. Okay. See when I, I was reading this, my mind went to showing nudity and certain words that are being censored on TV. Should it be all just out there? Well it's more like if the government knows something, then they should say something. 
right? I believe so. That's what they're trying to say is like, if something is out there, like, should they hide it or let the public know about it? I think so they're looking for your stance on that. Right. So I, I believe that they should say something. Right. Because it's not just their country. Yes. Yeah, so it's keep, not their world. Yeah. So keep that in mind as we okay. keep moving forward. Okay. Once you solved the puzzle, you were invited to a private forum where they were instructed to complete a project intended to further the ideals of the group. So now they have to do more work. That's all right. But if it's for their cause that they truly believe in. Yeah. Marcus did not finish the work on the general decryption and the website was then removed. He stopped working on it like a lot of people did because they got bored of it. Because once they're there to solve the puzzle. Right. And once they solve the puzzle, now they got to do more work. So they, he kind of like just left that group. Yeah, everybody did. Like, oh, the rest of them, they without without the puzzle mm-hmm. and without them like testing their knowledge, they kind of just got bored and they lost interest and then they just abandoned it. Okay. So this is how he solved the puzzle. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. We're going to get to a lot of like stuff here about okay. like internet decryption and stuff. So he, this is how smart these people are. I'll tell you that right now. He first opened the image in text only on a word pad. In text only? Text only on WordPad. He found a cipher in the bottom, right? Have you seen those WordPads with those decryption things? There's there are, a lot of stuff in there. I know. I don't. I, I get lost. Okay. So in using an encryption, they were able to find a URL that led to a photo of a rubber duck with another message. A rubber duck? Rubber ducky. You're, you're the, the one. one. <laughs> you make bath time so, so much, much fun. fun. Okay. <laughs> But what that just said was, whoops, just decoys this way. Looks like you can't guess how to get the message out. Oh, so it was just like a little, ha, 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 not this way. But oh. with, with this message, somebody found out that you, if you run the duck through another editor called Outguess, it reveals another URL. So it's like going down rabbit hole to rabbit hole. I, that's what I was and thinking. How do you figure this stuff out, right? Like to like look through like different editors and stuff like that. They're really smart people. Yeah. So in there, they solved clues that led to a phone number. And I did, I was going to write down like all this, like the steps, but it's way too much. Like, how do you I word get, that to people? I would get lost. Everybody just get lost. Be like, what the fuck's he talking about? Yeah. So once you solve the clues, it led to a phone number. And when you called it, there would be another message that follows. Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original file JPEG image 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com on the end to find the next step. Good luck. Goodbye. Huh. I'd be just trying every freaking number in the world. Well, you can't. But. Yeah. So multiplying the pixels on the image showed with another URL, which showed a picture of a cicada and a countdown for three days and a message. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, so the message read, you have done well to come this far. Patience is a virtue. Check back at 1700 on Monday, January 9th, 2012, UTC. What is UTC? Uh, UTC is Coordinated Universal Time. So I think it's just okay. Universal Time. Okay. So that's when you solve the puzzle, right? Mm-hmm. And there were so many steps. Like I, I brushed over like a ton of steps because, yeah, it's yeah, way too confused. much. <laughs> I get confused reading. I'm like going... Huh? huh? And I'm reading it. I'm looking at it. Imagine somebody said that to my face. I'd be like, eh, <laughs> that old duck. <laughs> my brain's going reboot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was just it's too much. Okay. So at the end of the three days, it revealed 14 GPS coordinates in Warsaw, Seoul, Sydney, Hawaii, Miami, New Orleans, and Seattle. Where's Canada? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So at the sites of each place, There was a white paper that had an image of a cicada and a QR code. So let me just tell you this right now. In all those places are the coordinates, Mm -hmm. like a pole, like say a a telephone pole or just a pole or whatever, or a board, they would have a piece of paper with an image of a cicada and the QR code in all those places. So you could tell that this was not done by one person. You can't. So like on a piece of paper, it's kind of like stapled to a pole? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it had like a picture of a cicada, because you know what a cicada looks like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just had a QR code on it. So okay. Like something to scan, right? Right. So they were placed in like Sydney, Hawaii, Miami. Like unless you got like unlimited funds to travel to all those places. Right. You, you have or, other people to put them up. The other option is to hire somebody. You could. 
like just phone somebody in those places, be like, hey, can you fax it fax over? It over? <laughs> well, yeah, you send it over an email or something, but whatever it is, yeah. right? So. I went fax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're old school. I know. Well, I had somebody ask me, well, do you have fax? I'm like, do people fax still? I don't think so. They do. You really? have to go to Staples and fax. You still have to fax. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Anyways. So the code would take you to a poem from Agrippa. 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 Yeah. Agrippa. It is a book of the dead. Ooh. But it would lead to a dot onion site, which is the dark web. You know, the dark, like the uh, onion I've, sites. No, I don't know the onion sites, but I know the dark web. Yeah, this so it leads you to the dark web. So now you're stepping into the dark path, right? Mm-hmm. Dark web now. Right. So in the dark web browser, you had to open a hotmail and there was a new message with more puzzles and encoded messages. And then after a month of this, Cicada left a message on 4chan. I'd be uncomfortable just opening up these emails. A lot of people go on the dark web, right? I know, but opening up a a weird email that's on your computer just shut down. Yeah. Kind of like my brain just did. (laughs) (laughs) So now a month later, obviously, Cicada left a message on 4chan. And they said, we have found the individuals we sought. Thus, our month-long journey ends. You are undoubtedly wondering what it is that we are. Much like a think tank in that our primary focus is on researching and developing techniques to aid the ideas we advocate, liberty, privacy, security. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast, but you just weren't sure how to even start? That was us too. We love listening to podcasts and always thought, hey, what if we started one too? That's when we found Buzzsprout and haven't looked back since. With Buzzsprout, they made it so easy. To start, you don't need all the expensive gear. If you have a recording device and a quiet space, then you're on your way to creating a great podcast. But if you do want to get the best that's available, then let us assure you, Buzzsprout can help with that. They provide so many tools and resources to help guide you along the way. So now that you've signed up with Buzzsprout and use the link that we've provided in our show notes, after two months of your subscription, you will receive a $20 Amazon gift card. You have now joined hundreds of thousands of others and became a podcaster and you will be heard all over the world on all major platforms like Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, Amazon, and many more. So what are you waiting for? Today is the day to come join us on the adventure of a lifetime and watch your number of downloads grow with the up-to-date location tool to see exactly where your audience is. This is where the magic begins. Come join us on Buzzsprout, where starting a podcast is made easy. So now after this was put out, it was speculated that this was just a recruiting scheme by either the CIA or a mega corporation looking for the brightest minds. The second puzzle was posted one year later on January 4th, 2013. Kind of remind me of Men in Black. Yeah. So the welcome message in this puzzle was, hello again. Our search for intelligent individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way. Good luck, 3301. So the second puzzle was typically the same, which leads to another phone number, where you enter the code. So it's pretty much the exact same thing as the first one. Like, they did the same steps. Like, kind of, like, they found, this like, stuff in the images and stuff like that. So is there QR codes around the world again? I believe so, yeah. And not Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you like you look at the picture and open it in the word pad and do mm-hmm. all that stuff. It was a little right. of copy and paste the first one, right? Yeah. Things were a little bit different. Like I looked at it and there was some similarities and there were also some things that were different. So it's not the same people winning, right? Right. So you know what else happened in 2013? No. Edward Snowden happened. Do you know who he was? Kind of, yeah. He was the whistleblower that was like, you know, had the secrets of the U.S. and he was like sending them to Russia. 
Yeah, I remember that, but I thought it was like recently, like as in five, four years ago. I didn't realize it was 2013. Yeah. Time is flying, man. <laughs> Nine years ago. Yeah, holy. So he was called a traitor, a oh, hero, right. and a whistleblower, right. a coward, or a patriot. Like, it all depends what you believe, right? Yeah, I remember that now. Yep. So that's why they always ask these people, where's your stance on censorship, mm -hmm. privacy? Because mm -hmm. Edward Snowden just did all this stuff, and now he's... Yeah, he didn't care they about censorship, right? Exactly. He let everyone know what was going on. Yeah. So now, with that all out in the public, the challenges that Cicada was going to face coincided with that of the NSA was doing with mass data. Then, poof, Cicada was gone for one more year because the they went heat into was, hiding. Well, yeah. yeah, the heat was on them now because Edward Snowden came out being a whistleblower, and then they're doing all this stuff about talking about like like data and all right, that kind of stuff. Right. And they're like, okay, we got to lay low for a little bit. Exactly. But then the next year, January, 2014 was upon us again. And for the third straight year in a row, another message was posted and it stated, hello, epiphany is upon you. Your pilgrimage has begun. Enlightenment awaits. So that was a little bit different from. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't the copy and paste one from before. Yeah. It changed up a little mm -hmm. bit. A hidden image is revealed of a cicada logo after alternating the contrast settings. So once you like play around with the contrast, a cicada logo appears. Right. And after this, another coded message is revealed. And this puzzle was completely different than the first two. Kind of makes me think of somebody else. Well, it could just be because those ones maybe too many people got it right because now they know the the process of it. Could be, yeah. So they got to change it up. There was no welcome message, just like the first ones, like to join a like-minded people of a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. like they had the last, the first right. two. And the winning code breakers got a link to a book, Liber Primus. Um, some of the pages were easy to decode, but 56 pages of the 74 remain unsolved. And then after this, Cicada was gone again. So that book was just all like a hidden message. There's a hidden message you have to decode every page of that book to learn the message. Oh my gosh. And nothing new was released until 2016 that a message was released. What did it say? The path lies empty. Epiphany seeks the devoted. Liber Primus is the way. Its words are the map. Their meaning is the road. And their numbers are the direction. Seek and you will be found. Good luck. And gone. To me, it almost sounds like it was somebody else though. Well... Like somebody else trying to copy? I think it was just because the first one, two ones were like the same. And or, maybe they had the same codes to try, try to crack. This one here is a different code to crack, right? Yeah. To see how smart you actually really were. And nobody that I know of has cracked this code. Oh, really? Nobody. Like I said, only 54, 54 that remain unsolved. 74 pages, whatever. Right. What was it 54? Um, Something like 50, that. 56 of the 74 remain unsolved. Wow. So nobody's cracked this code yet. Is it still out there that you could try cracking it? Yeah, it is. I believe so. It's all in Liber Primus, like the thing that they sent you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so little progress has been made on this puzzle and it remains unsolved to this day. And Cicada has now been gone and hopefully they'll re reappear. Mm -hmm. But right now they haven't. Since 2016, they've been in the wind. That's strange that they just came in for three years and then just gone. Yeah. Well, okay. So... There's other things going on here too, right? Okay. So, so there are theories of who they might be. So you want oh, to hear the theories? Yeah, definitely. So first, we're going to start with them being a cult. Yeah. Okay. Using the dark web and using many assortment of puzzles would lead to them being a cult to try and recruit the smartest people to seek enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So that would be. Absolutely. Yeah. And also to them appearing and disappearing in a flash can seem like what a cult would do. Hidden in the shadows of secrecy. Yeah. So there's one way, like they're looking for like, like say this, I don't know, a smart cult, I guess, or hackers, like anonymous. Yeah. Right. I don't know. There's That's one theory. It right? could be. Absolutely. Yeah. So next we're going to talk about QAnon. Okay. So we're going to get into QAnon in later episodes because it's fascinating. But for this case, QAnon promoter and media producer, Lisa Clapier urged the people who are trying to crack Cicada's puzzle to take part on Q's post and follow the White Rabbit. Oh, you like to follow a White Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in 
So as of now, Cicada 3301 have never stated that they are part of any corporation in any way. So I doubt it could be QAnon. Like that promoter wanted people to solve the puzzle Mm -hmm. so they could recruit those people to To join QAnon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Snatch them up. Yep. How about the government and the U.S. Navy? Because Mm. the U.S. Navy actually released a challenge based on puzzles of Cicada. So they were trying to recruit the smartest people in their own way. Doing like doing the same thing that Cicada was doing. They were trying to hire people to crack Cicada's code. No, it wasn't actually Cicada's code. They made their own code, and they wanted people to crack their own. But they took Cicada's example. Oh, okay. So, Makes sense. Yeah, they tried to like copy it to find the smartest people to join the U.S. Navy mm-hmm. because the U.S. Navy you need code crackers. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think so. I don't think it's that one. No, no, I'm not leaning towards that one at all. What about the CIA? Okay. Because they are always have interest in looking for the brightest people. And maybe this is a way to find unknowns to join code breakers who have no interest in the government. This would be a very good strategy to find the geniuses in the world. It would be. Because there's a lot of people that don't think that they're, you know, have the intelligence to join the CIA. Yeah. And all of a sudden they crack these codes, be like, well, you have the intelligence. Yeah. So that could be a possibility. It very well could be. I'm thinking, I don't know why my head went there, but pinky in the brain. Oh. <laughs> you know, taking over the world. Right. Getting all these people to join this elite group to take over the world. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, it's a possibility. Like, because like, people like, say my stepdad, right? He's got like a photographic memory. He's extremely smart. He does all those like very very hard puzzles he's the smartest no, person i've ever has met. no issues doing them right yeah but he you never think that he would join the cia or anything like that because he's just he owns his own company he's right an average joe but he is a brainiac yeah and, he is. but he doesn't believe he is but he is i know like he knows like everything that we like you watch jeopardy he gets all the answers correct yeah right? and but he doesn't think himself that way no but he's extremely smart so they might be looking for people like that who just don't think that they have the Could mental be. capacity, but they actually do. Right. So a TV show, Person of Interest, which we have watched, mm-hmm. they actually have an episode based on Cicada called Nautilus. 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 Yeah. But uh, we also can't rule out the infamous hacker group Anonymous either. Oh, yeah. Maybe they are doing some recruitment to look for hackers to join them on their quest. So just to point out, that the cities that had the QR codes, remember those ones I told you? Mm-hmm. They are known to have some of the most talented hackers and IT security researchers in the world. So if you go like all those places I told you about, like Seattle, mm-hmm. Seoul, right. like, they have like the best hackers, right? So why put all the messages on those places? Because they have the best hackers. Right. Like you probably wouldn't put the places in like, you know, Grand Forks, Michigan or... Timbuktu. Timbuktu or like the Yukon, you put them in the places where you're going to find probably the best people and they could travel to it easy, right? Right. Because you don't want to be like, put it in, say, Yukon, you're not going to get too many people going there or Alaska, right? Probably not. You want to put it in the, the top cities. Right. The huge cities, the, the populated cities where there's a lot of people. Yeah. And well, they work for these big corporations that need smart people. Yeah, like IT security, right, stuff like that. exactly. So Knox... Opelai, who is a Canadian citizen, solved the second puzzle and was greeted in a private forum by other winners and members of Cicada. Yay, Canada! <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we did something. Yeah. He stated that he was to be patient. There has been no contact from Cicada ever since. What the hell? Yeah, so he went to the private forum with them. Yeah. And they said, be patient. And they have, everybody has, but they haven't came back to them. They're not going to come back. So some people think that is because there was some early messages that said that you have to solve this puzzle on your own by Cicada. Mm -hmm. And they may think that people may have been working together in these forums and communities and may have like, you know, not used those people who thought they were working together. They want to use the brightest people, not the brightest three people doing the same puzzle. Right. right? I get that. So maybe they brought them in there and then they found out maybe they're working with somebody else maybe. They, they were brainstorming together to solve it. Yeah, exactly. So they weren't actually the brightest people because they're using they, each other as a crutch. Yeah. I, I would say a crutch. Yeah. They might have been. So I don't know. I don't know why they 
did that. Why well, they just they ghosted them, but they did. Like they solved the puzzles, like the first two anyway. Right. So they should be greeted with like praise to do that. Should be. I would just yeah. go on with my life and say, screw you. So over 21,000 people now follow the community on Reddit and a few thousand on Discord. There actually is a Discord page. I didn't go to it, though. No, you didn't? No, I looked at it, though. I was like, oh, I, was, I should join it, but I, I didn't. And I looked at the Reddit, but I don't really get Reddit too much. I'm like, I have no idea how Reddit works. So Knox has been trying to solve the third puzzle for years, and he thinks the puzzle will never be solved. So now what I do know is that there must be a big organization behind it because there were QR codes in numerous cities around the world. It's too much for one man to do so, so there must be a group controlling Cicada. Mm -hmm. So like I said earlier, unless they paid somebody from each town to put up the flyers. Yeah, they could have an anonymous person sending this out. Can you put these up or whatever? I don't know. Yep. Or part of their group or unless, like you said, unlimited funds and this person was able to fly around and... Put them all over the world. Yeah. Also, too, I did watch a YouTube video where all the flyers were actually near the airports, like within two kilometers or something, or two miles from the airport. Makes sense. So it could be one person is going to each one, but he'd have to have unlimited funds. And he'd be very, very smart to set up these puzzles alone. That's a lot to do for one person. I think there's a group of people. Maybe they put it by the airport so it's more convenient for the person who might come from another city and go there, scan the code, and then leave again. Yeah, possibly. That could definitely be a possibility. Or like like I said earlier, like talk about one guy traveling to like each one and just put it them off, yeah. two kilometers away, right? Mm-hmm. And then go to the next one. Like, But you'd have to have a lot of money to be traveling to all those cities, yeah, right? Yeah, there's a lot of theories. Yep. So with no more contact, we are still waiting for Cicada to reach out and offer more clues. It's over. They haven't been out since. Oh, really? That's it? That's it? That's it. They have. <gasps> They're, I think they're waiting for people to solve the third puzzle. Like they said in 2016, you know, that puzzle is the key to everything, but nobody solved it. And then they vanished. Maybe it wasn't they. Maybe it's just one person. And that person just croaked. I think it's more than one. I think it's a group of people. Like to, to do these puzzles, to build these puzzles, right? Mm-hmm. You need to have, you need to be very smart in coding, encryption. You have to build all this, right? You can't just, like, if you go to like the word pad, to put that image in there, there's a yeah. lot of stuff to go through. You have to, and you have to be able to put a code in there. And you need like the brightest people in the world, like in a room together doing this, I think. So, what do you think? Do you think it is a uh, CIA? Do um, you think it's government? I don't think it's government because government would have came out by now. Not necessarily. Yeah. They're secretive. And then why would they? Actually, I don't know. Maybe it is government because, oh, do you hate the government? Come on. Solve this. Oh, do you want to join the government? Yeah. I mean, and actually, too, nobody's actually ever came out and said they have a job through Cicada. So the people that won, like who solved the puzzles, they don't know all the people. Right. They could have got inside jobs, but nobody said anything about it, right? They could have like a, you know, sworn to secrecy or something. You don't know. They could have found people to who solved these puzzles and are now working for them. We don't know. Maybe it has been solved. Maybe. Like, there could have been people out there who did it on their own and solved it, and now they're working for Cicada or whatever it is, right? Almost think it's an organization to solve, like, nuclear or world problems or something like that. Well, you think of Cicada, and they swarm areas, right? Right. They go into fields, and they swarm and eat everything away, and then they keep going, traveling. It's like this is sort of um, – a group who wants to just go swarming the government offices and then just go to the next government office. Maybe that's what their plan is. I don't know. Nobody knows. That's the thing. That's this one's just open in the air. Nobody knows where they came from, where they went, who they are or what happened. It's all a mystery. Just like cicadas. They come and then they go just boom. But what we do know is that they have three big puzzles out there and two and two were solved. One was not. And that's where it stands. The person's probably dead. I don't know about that. I think it's more people. It can't be one person. It can't be. In my head. Was that the TV show uh, iRobot or something? Yeah, with uh, Rami Malek. Yeah. Yep. Smart people. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it could be. But unless they send us more messages, we'll never know. Because that is a wrap on that. Ah, you rhymed. <laughs> okay, cool. I had no idea about this. You're talking about some sort of deciphering puzzles before but i didn't know about this yeah it's a tough puzzle like i 
So when I looked at uh, like how to, how they solved it and all the stuff they went through, mm-hmm. my mind just went like kaput. I your, was like, your brain just shut down and shut did down. reboot. Like, well, I, I lost everything. Like I didn't know what I was doing. Like this whale's just talking right there. Uh, 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 no idea what was happening. I felt like my brain was like uh, exploding in my head, going, "What the hell just happened?" And I didn't do anything. I was reading. It's, it's like the blue screen of death. Yeah. <laughs> Shut down, reboot. Yep. I don't know what I'm doing. When you were explaining it to me, you know that meme of that woman and then there's all those numbers going above her head? Have you ever seen that me- no, meme? I and she looks confused and like she's almost trying to like piece these numbers together and decipher something. That felt like me. I was just like, what the frick is going on? Yeah. I, I understood know. what you're talking about, but I was just like, I'm trying to figure out who did this. Yeah, if I would have told you exactly how they did everything. It'll just be everybody just be lost. I mean, there's no point in doing something like yeah, that because yeah. they 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 solved it and then move on pretty much. Yeah. And I gave you like a little stuff like, you know, follow the pictures, like yeah, the pixels, like multiply the numbers. Like that's who thinks of that stuff? Like I'll look at it going, hmm. <laughs> what do I do here? <laughs> Click the picture, nothing happens. Well, I did my part. <laughs> my puzzle. Moving on. My puzzle was last night on um, TikTok, and it was looking at colors and seeing which one was different. Oh. And that's what I was doing while you were sleeping. I was just like, which color is different? And I only got the yellow. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, how is the red different? And then they show the difference between the, the dark red and the, the light red. Yep. There was no difference to oh. me. I'm like, so that's my puzzle game. Nice. <laughs> So I think that's going to end it for us now. If you want to reach out to us, you go to worldstruecrime.com. That's where you'll find everything. If you have an idea of what Cicada is, let us know. Send us a message. We'd love to hear it. We would. This is very interesting. Yep. And uh, yeah, just remember that if you want more episodes, we'll be on Patreon. And you can find our merch at redbubble.com slash worldstruecrime. Okay. So I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so the world is not always as it seems. No, it's not. Bye, guys. Bye.